The month of May is almost gone, and the garden's starting to grow a little faster now. Let's go take a closer look. The garlic is getting huge, and the tomato plants are gaining some size now. We even have a few tomatoes setting on. This is one of our baronia plants. If you watched last week's video, you can see that the sweet potato plants are larger and fuller now. Not only did I plant sweet potato slips in the straw bales, but I also planted 30 sweet potato slips around the edges of the garden. We'll get a harvest from all of those extra slips, but the main reason I plant them is to help keep the Bermuda grass from growing into the garden. This is a look at what those sweet potato slips will look like once they fill in. That means a lot less work for me, and then we end up getting an extra crop. Whenever possible, I like to go by that old saying, work smarter, not harder. Our carrots are starting to grow a little faster now. Our favorite carrot last year from six varieties was St. Valerie, and we're growing that one again along with five others. The peppers, the spinach, and the lettuce are all doing great right now. Starting our peppers extra early this year helped us get off to a much better start than we got off to last year. We even have peppers on some of our plants. This one is Buena Mulata. It starts out purple and then goes through several color changes on its way to becoming red at maturity. The albino bullnose pepper is usually one of our first peppers to produce and this year it's no different. It'll give us a few sweet peppers to enjoy while we're waiting on some of the others. The largest peppers we have so far are on the blot pepper plant. This one's off to a very good start. The Rowia is another sweet pepper and it also has several peppers on it. The Cubanelle has lots of blooms on it and also a few peppers. Our Jimmy Nardello pepper is also covered with blooms and has a few peppers. The petunias in the hollow log are off to a pretty good start and we're starting to see less log and more petunias. All of the plants that we're going to trellis in the cages are noticeably larger than last week. Some of the pole beans are thick enough that I'll probably have to thin a few of them. They were pretty tiny last week, but we actually have a few that are climbing the cages now. It's interesting to see the different rates of growth in the different types of pole beans. This one's almost two feet tall in spots. The Japanese long cucumber is off to a little bit faster start than the Market Moore 76. But with warmer weather coming soon, it should catch up. The melons are also growing slowly and waiting for that warmer weather. I also noticed that the Matoyo eggplant is off to a little bit better start than the Rosa Bianca. The 12 types of lettuce that we have growing in the grow bag have been loving the cooler damp weather that we've been having lately. It's been interesting watching the different varieties grow under very similar growing conditions. I often compare plants from one year to the next but it's hard to beat a side-by-side -side comparison. It will be very interesting to me to see how these compare on the dinner table. Along with the lettuce growing in the grow bag we have the same 12 varieties growing in our stackable pots plus an additional three varieties for a total of 15 varieties in the stackable pots. This should give us a pretty good idea of what we want to grow in the future. Once the weather gets hot and the lettuce starts to bolt, I'll replace those with some micro tomatoes. I also started a sun gold cherry tomato that I'll be putting out in the main garden. The four varieties of beets that we're growing are all off to a pretty good start. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any difference when we pickle them. The corn needs to be thinned a little bit and I'm looking forward to seeing how our cross did from last year. The fennel is almost waist high, but the butterflies haven't found it yet. Cucumber beetles did a lot of damage to the amaranth before I realized they were even there. I'm glad that I hadn't thinned it to one plant of each type yet. The quinoa looks surprisingly like lamb quarters once it starts growing. So far the insects haven't bothered it yet. The tallest of the Musabashju bananas are about six feet tall now. 
or a little less than two meters. The Musa Velutina pups are starting to grow better now and those will end up about six or seven feet tall. Some of the ginger that I planted recently is already starting to sprout. Here's a look at our jigsaw pepper. One half of the plant has a lot more variegation than the other half. This is one of our purple flash crosses and I'm liking the way it looks so far. Here are two of its siblings. As you can see there's quite a bit of difference. Recently I stuck some pole beans in an unused container and they're just starting to come up. This is what our heavy hitter okra seedlings look like right now. In order to add a little more color to the garden, I made this petunia tower out of a tomato cage and some landscape fabric. Some of our butterfly weed is just starting to bloom. I haven't inspected for any monarch eggs yet. With all of the cool wet weather, the no-dig potatoes have gotten extremely tall. I'm not sure how these will do, but we'll find out in time. Our mock orange bushes are in bloom now. This is the one that the cardinals built a nest in. This variety has single blooms, but we also have one that has double blooms. One thing that I've noticed this year is they aren't covered with butterflies and hummingbird moths like they usually are. Last year we grew two different watermelons, Mountain Sweet Yellow and Royal Golden. This year we're going to try two more types. They're Moon and Stars and Crimson Sweet. I've heard good things about Crimson Sweet, so if you've grown that one, let us know what you think of it. We added a couple of drift roses to our collection. This one is called Popcorn. And we got another one called Coral. I like drift roses because they don't grow that large and can be used as a ground cover. Our new additions will go well with our red drift rose, our apricot drift rose, and also our peach drift rose. We're still enjoying the sugar and peas, but with hot weather coming soon, their days are numbered. The Orioles are still visiting our feeders on a regular basis, but soon they'll be too busy taking care of their baby Orioles to show up as often. Some of you might remember that last year I planted sweet potatoes around our storm shelter. This year I'm going to be growing some tomatoes and peppers. I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but it gave me a place to put some of our extra plants. Along the back fence I put a string trellis up and on that I'm going to grow some Malabar spinach, some long beans, and maybe some jicama. Be sure and let us know how your garden's doing and don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.